Jeff immediately calling for Mel for some, some heavy pressure and good connection. But Emily is creating a very, very interesting uh, problem for Mel and with her connection on bottom as well. tell Emily is tr trying to get under the legs or break the posture or you know get get her off balanced in some way and Melanie is looking to just kind of keep her pressure keep her posture try to start to break open that guard as you can see she's trying to step up and maybe uh, build up a little bit more posture here to create some more pressure Emily really climbing up and trying to hang off of Melanie right now a really, really heavy necklace. She's getting nice and close. Emily might try to sweep to try to come into the full mount position. Mel does a good job with getting her pressure, or she, or excuse me, getting her posture, getting butt to her feet. Now this is going to create a lot of pressure for Emily and her keeping her guard closed. Emily doing whatever she can to hang on to this full guard here, but it's really tough. Goes for an interesting arm drag grip. But Mel just looking like her base is just too 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 strong. Too too difficult to, to waver. Mel does a phenomenal job with a beautiful knee cut pass, a back step right into potentially a honey hole position or a 411. Mill defending, looking super comfortable with that single leg attempt. A very, very nice wrestle up from Emily as well. Ladies reestablish a bit of a shin to shin type of a connection here from Emily. Mel does a really, really good job at stepping around that shin. <laughs> Mel taking the advice from her coach very, very well, keeping very, very good pressure here. Emily looking very composed though. She's got very, very good connection on the hips. She seems to be keeping Mel at bay in regards to a deep pass attempt. So we're looking for potentially a, a leg lock attempt here from, from uh, Emily Nicholson. She's trying to go for that straight angle, potentially an Aoki lock if the leg comes a little shallow. Mel's trying to step over that knee and try to come out to the back. Mel does a really, really good job at keeping that pressure, ultimately making Emily abandon that attack. Good, good pressure. About three and a half minutes into this match between these two competitors. Emily Nicholson opts to get back to her feet. Let's see if she... See how the wrestling plays out between these two ladies. Mel super, super heavy with her collar tie. Emily looking for a two on one on the wrist. Emily ultimately opts to pull her guard again. She establishes a leg connection where she's trying to, looks like it go for a bit of a straight ankle grip here from the uh, standard Ashi position or a bit of an outside Ashi position here. It's a little bit hard to see from our angle. There we go. Mel reestablishes her standing po passing position. Emily seems to be very, very comfortable playing her guard. She's going back and forth between playing a guard position and coming up with a little bit of a wrestle uh, strategy as well. Emily trying to make a deep attempt on the legs here. Mel does a really, really good job at keeping like a nice, a nice passing attempt here. She's really crushing the hips. Emily getting that hip on the inside, or excuse me, getting that hook on the inside. We gotta watch the arm bar, watch for a potential triangle attempt if she does pull that arm out. Emily really 
she's showing her flexibility in this position here, her comfortability and her flexibility. And Mel doing the Seraphim BJJ style, really keeping heavy pressure. And her left elbow is clear. She does a really, really good job of trying to pull around to the back, Emily defending well. It's a good fight between these ladies. Immediately, Mel's putting this pressure. She's putting a lot of collar tie uh, pressure as well, getting very, very heavy. Ultimately, that pressure gets a guard pull. She gets her leg pulled into a bit of a shadow hook. Mel does a good job clearing the foot. Emily was doing a really, really good job of extending her out and widening her base, but Mel addressed that very, very quickly. Beautiful sequence from these two ladies. We had a little bit of an arm isolation from Emily. Mel doing a very, very good job at circling and rolling out of the position, getting herself in a very, very strong passing attempt. She's got a good position here to potentially take the back, to potentially set up a Dar's position. She, uh, she's got a lot of options from here, but we also have to worry about the potential counter of Emily potentially rolling through for a leg. Um, Three minutes left now. Bit of an inter interesting position. Mel does a great job with getting the back here. Back exposure, I should say. She's looking for a little bit of a seatbelt. She's most likely either going to come up to the mount position by pushing uh, her opponent's right knee down and getting her left knee to the mat, or she could potentially build up to her right knee and start establishing a good old uh, 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 seated back take position. Mel's getting a little bit high up on the back. Emily is doing a good job at getting herself out, but Mel opts to get a nice, nice Kimura grip, and she uses that to get a good sweep. She's got a very, very solid Kimura grip here. This is very, very good for Mel. Emily's got to take her time in regards to uh, her defense, and she's got to make sure that she keeps her hand in front of her hips here. This is going to be the best-case scenario for Emily. If Mel is able to get the pass and able to step over the head, this is going to be a really, really good position for her to be able to finish. She's got a neon belly and she's trying to step over the head to finish this Kimura here, but Emily's doing a really, really good job making it difficult for her. She's looking to her corner for a little bit of finishing advice, as experienced competitors do. She's got a really, really good scenario here where she's got a lot of options. But Emily's doing a really, really good job of keeping just, just defensively sound. Not really giving up anybody anything too deep. But let's see how Mel uh, addresses this attacking situation. Beautiful back take by Mel here. Emily tried to create a bit of an explosion out of that position. And ultimately, it gave Mel the opportunity to get deeper on the back here. Emily doing a really good job of clearing the bottom hook. She's trying to get her back to the mat, and now she's looking to sit up for the knee bar. trying to establish an, an attack here. She's got a good isolation on the knee. She's got a toe hold, a knee bar. She's got a lot of stuff going on here. Looks like Mel is pretty hip to it. Let's see what she does off of the defense. And that's our 10 minute match. We're going into our overtime round. I'll have to see what the refs say in regards to who's gonna get the advantage here for picking. They're gonna give it to Mel, it looks like. 
Melanie Iverson getting the ability to choose whether she wants to go first or not. She is taking the bottom half, it looks like. Emily chooses the spider web position. Really, really good connection by Emily right off the bat, but man, Melanie has done a great job with building up and stepping over and getting a good position, but we're she's back into a good stacking position. She's got her weight in the right pot, the right spot here. Yeah, that's a that's a bit of an interesting rule, but I agree. Good job by Mel too, uh, to to take advantage of the rule set to get herself out of that position. All right, so Mel opts to take the back. My first guess is be that her strategy is that she's just trying to go for the ride time, but. Emily does a really, really good job at clearing that hook, but Mel has a, a phenomenal seatbelt grip right now. She's very, very deep on the head and arm. Emily does a good job, gets the escape, gets her back to the mat. So we're going to have a little bit more of a control time so far for Emily, um, and she's going to opt for the back this time. Immediately, Mel exploding to a side, trying to get her head and her back and her shoulders to the mat. She's trying to get her knees to the mat. She's trying to belly down a little bit. Emily doing a really, really good job readjusting, keeping her chest to back connection. Mel doing a great job of keeping a lot of movement, and there she does, does a great job of getting out of that position. The ride time is definitely in favor currently for uh, for Emily, but we'll see how this round plays out. Emily opts for the back again, or excuse me, uh, Melanie opts for the back again. And we start this next round. So Melanie immediately trying to establish the bottom triangle on the bottom side. She's got a really, really good squeeze on the body or on the uh, the head and arm. Emily is really turning that corner super, super well, but Melanie throws it right into a triangle, which is continually the continuing the attack. A beautiful chain by Melanie there, but ultimately ends in an escape by uh, by Emily. Mel listening to her corner very, very well. Trying to create this big explosion to get out of there, but man, Emily is doing a great job with gluing her body to her. Really, really good chest back to the connection. She's got a really, really great body triangle here that's really making it difficult for Melanie to create any sort of movement at all. Melanie's got her watch her neck here. We're in a bit of a deep choke situation where she might be under the chin, if I'm not mistaken. So Emily just gets the rear naked choke, but that was the top of the bracket, or excuse me, the top of the round. So Melanie will have the opportunity to get the win back by submitting her in a shorter period of time. She opts for the spider web position, which as earlier, if you guys were listening, um, Jeff mentioned quite a bit that this is a very, very common option. If somebody needs a quick submission, it's a, it's a lot more common than you'll see somebody going for a quick armbar finish as opposed to the back where you'll generally see people trying to ride out the back and, and, and really add up a lot of control time. Mel's in a good position here, but she is getting stacked. Emily has... She's potentially going to get swept here. Mel's trying to head spike her, but Emily's doing a really, really good job of keeping her base. Mel's trying, she's sticking out her tongue, she's trying everything she's got, she's putting everything into this because she knows this is, she can't win on the ride time at this point. It's impossible and there to, Melanie does a phenomenal job trying to get the finish, but ultimately the win goes to Emily Nicholson who wins by submission in EBI overtime.